worship. Let's begin with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day you have given us to worship. God, I pray that as we are about to just get into your presence, dive into your word, I pray that you would anoint us, uh, bless our hearts. God, I pray that you would just help us to focus on you right now and that we would just be able to sing these words with meaning and with truth in praise of who you are. Thank you for always being there, and pray all of this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Where heaven's spun creations, his pride and adorations, treasures woven by his love. His careful hands, they hold us safe within his promise of calling.
Father, we just want to thank you so much for this morning, Lord. We want to give you glory and honor to you. this Sunday morning, Lord Father. Even though we are not meeting in in person, Lord, even though we are worshiping uh, in distance, Lord Father, we are we know that, Lord Father, you are listening to our prayers and listening to our praises, Lord. Every word is spoken. Every word that we lift, every song that we sing, the praises we lift it up to you, Lord Father. So may your spirit, may your name be praise and honor, Lord. So Lord, we want to give you glory this morning, Lord. Would you continue to speak to our heart? May our heart be open to you, Father. And we just want to turn this glory to you, Father. For you are living and active. We want to praise you. We want to love you. Because you are awesome God, Lord. So, we want to open this, this time. Welcome your presence. Welcome your spirit. May your spirit continue to work in our life, Lord. And we want to give you honor and glory to you, Father. Because you are good. We praise and praise you and pray in your name. Amen. 
Good morning, everyone. It's so great to see you all. Before we start, I just want to say thank you for participating in our Hallelujah Night. Uh, we were very excited and we were really proud of you that you came to pick up all your goodie bags and uh, logged online. And I hope you had a great time. We did too. It was just good to see everybody, you know, just acting silly and just having fun. Um, while everybody else is doing other things, we're going to have fun in our own way. And we just wanted to celebrate the coming of fall and you know, give you some treats. Um, any Anytime we can celebrate with you, we will try to uh, make that uh, as an activity. So thank you for joining us, and I hope you had fun too. Thank you, Praise Team and Mr. Paul, for praying for us. It's good to see you. Hope you and your family is doing well, and we do miss you. One of the great news that I have to share even before we start our announcements is that next week, we're actually going to have in-person worship for all high school so we're trying to abide by our state tier model and just being safe so we're only going to have only the high schoolers attend next week and then the week after will be only middle school and then the week after will be only elementary and I will continue to remind you I'll put it on our group talk your parents have been uh, notified so we are eager to see you guys and uh, but, but we're going to do this safely. Um, so there are going to be some rules that we want you to kind of abide by, but it will be just simple ones that you would follow um, as if you were in community or even at school. And so I hope you can help us to help you to uh, come back to church so that we can freely uh, praise and worship. I'll tell you more details um, next week and also in the announcements. But last month, we spent uh, a good amount of time in figuring out who I am. And I think I explained to you that, you know, as the year kind of ends, I kind of always go back to the foundational uh, beliefs and just remind myself who I am. And I hope by the end of last week's message, you realize that, you know what? Yeah, I really can't define myself without God. I can't really find myself without finding the Lord first. And I can't really figure out who I am before I figure out who God is. And I hope that your purpose of existence and the way you live is and will be continued to be held by heavenly standards, even though we're here on earth. Uh, this month, I can't believe, again, it's November already. Um, now it's been almost eight months, I think, since the pandemic. And every month, I think it's going to get better. And, and the month goes by so fast. And 2020 is going to be over in, in, in less than two months. Um, but, of course, when we think about November, what are some things that come to your mind? Right? Yes, turkey, a lot of eating, a lot of holidays, a lot of partying. But this year, I'm sure it's going to look very, very different. Um, your Thanksgiving, my Thanksgiving might not be the same because if my family gathers, there's more than like 10 of us. So we're just trying to think, how can we celebrate together yet abide by the rules and be safe? But in thinking about all the different changes, one of the things that never change is the way we praise and worship God and the way we thank the Lord. And so I thought, you know, what, what better month than November to, th to, to discuss and dive deeper into giving thanks. So this month, we're going uh, to be talking about what it means to give thanks. And it's not just, oh, thank you, God, for this. Thank you for that. But it's really diving deeper. And I'm going to use the letters in the word thank. And we're going to go on a journey together and dive deeper through the scriptures and through the Lord's wisdom of what giving thanks really ought to be. But before we start, Mr. Mingo is going to read the scriptures for us and we'll be back. Hello, today's scripture reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep these commands. Thank you, Mr. Mingu, for reading the scriptures for us. This is going to be the start of our journey to just ponder and wonder what it means to give thanks. And so as the beginning part of the word, the letter um, of the word thank, it's T. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to break up the words like an acrostic poem. So if you guys don't know what an acrostic poem is, taking a word and finding a word that describes it, right? So we do a lot of this with your name um, as attention getters. But today or this month, we're going to use the word think and break it up into what I thought would help us remember. Your words 
could be a little bit different, but just uh, bear with me as we kind of dive in. So when I pondered on giving thanks and I thought about what, what could we uh, put in this word for tea? And I thought it has to be think. We have to think before we give thanks. So let me tell you the background of what Mr. Mingo read. And Deuteronomy is one of the books that we actually studied in our uh, Saturday Bible study. So I'm not going to go over it in depth, but I'm just going to highlight what, what was the whole point of Deuteronomy. Of course, it was written by, yes, it was written by Moses. And it's kind of like a farewell message. Moses writes through the Deuteronomy to really remind his people, you know what, don't forget. Don't forget what the Lord did for you. Don't forget what the Lord did for us. And I want you to believe in faith and be obedient. And he continues to remind the people of, of the, just God's intent. So throughout the 34 chapters in Deuteronomy, uh, Moses really depict what God had to deal, deal with, with his people. Um, not only through hardship and testing, but he really wanted to emphasize and depict, but you know what? Despite the hardship and despite the test, that God's faithfulness really uh, reigned over all. God's love for us and God's purpose for us was much, much greater than the hardship that we faced. And it was through faith, faith that just doesn't come to you. You don't just wake up one day and think, yep, I am so faithful. Faith is something that you need to nourish, that you need to help it to grow. Faith is something that's going to mature with you as you dive deeper into God's word. And faith is not something automatic or mechanical, but it's, it, it comes from the serious, intimate relationship with our Lord. And Moses tries to really remind the people in the book of Deuteronomy what faith is. And in doing that, he says, you know what? Don't forget your heart. God desires your heart. God doesn't want you to obey like the Pharisees because that's just the rule. But God wants to obey, and before the obedience comes your heart. Like you're just obeying to God because you just love him so much, and you just want to please him. You're obeying to the word of God because you know that God's intent, God's bigger picture of it all is really to save you, to protect you, to guide you, and to take you into the promised land. And Moses really wanted to remind his people. And he did also remind them to don't forget to tell of these stories to the new generation. Don't forget to just introduce them early on of who God is. Because if they don't know who God is or they don't remember or re recollect who God is, there's a chance that they might fall into what? Idolatry. And we have seen this pattern over and over and over again. The reason why I picked this verse today to, to start off our journey in giving thanks is I wanted us to know that, and I think it's very, very important for us when we give thanks to really think about it. Think about our past. Moses really reminds the people, you know, I want you to really think about the past as you're giving thanks. In the past, at that time, you thought it was so hard. You, you thought, oh my, I don't know if I can get through this. But as time passed and you look back, you cannot help but... Wow, God was there even when I thought he wasn't. God was behind me. God was in front of me. God actually, as we pray, stepped into my Egypt to free me, to take me out and deliver me into the promised land. And that's who God is. You know, the word thank you is one of those words, what? It's one of those words that when, pe when kids start to talk, that's the first thing mommies and daddies and, and, and teachers teach them. What do you say? Thank you. What do you say, right? Thank you, please, I'm sorry. Those are like maybe three common phrases that we teach kids from very, very young, right? And I'm sure that you say thank you like just automatic, right? Like, oh, thank you. Oh, thanks, yeah. Oh, thank you. But today and this month, I want us to really, really ponder. When you say thank you, what are you thanking them for? I want us to think and thank intentionally and purposefully. And that takes some heart. That takes some brain cells. 
right? Have you ever had an instant when you did something for someone, you went out of the way and you spent your time and energy and did it for that person because you love them and you didn't do it to get anything in return, but when that person, oh, 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 oh thanks, yeah, and it wasn't really sincere, to be honest, I'd be the first to admit, how many of you guys were hurt? Yeah, sometimes I do things for people um, just because, I, you know, I can see that they need it. And when I do it, sometimes I, sometimes I don't even get a thanks. Um, uh, but when I do get a thanks, it's just, oh, thanks, yeah, like, like yeah, why'd you do that for? I didn't need it, you know, and then it makes me feel like, oh, maybe I, it, maybe I didn't have to help them or maybe I didn't have to do it. Right. Or sometimes we say thank you to people without much heart. Uh, when you go to restaurants and, you know, our waiter or, or, or the person gives you water or brings out your food. You know, do you say thank you meaningfully or you're like you even look at that person? Oh, thanks. Right. And for me personally, I, I tell my boys, look at the person and say thank you meaningfully. And they kind of look at me like, what? You know, but yeah, I think every time we say thank you or we should say thank you a lot more. We need to do it with some meaning. And one of the things that we can do is, you know what? Just thinking about what happened to us. In verse 2, Moses reminds the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years. We must think about that. Moses reminds them. You know, and then I wondered, if the generation that really tried their best to remember what God did, and pass on all the great stories of the pillars and the fire and you know how how God was the provider i wonder i wonder if they would have been oppressed by egyptian and become slaves to the point that god would need to free them you know I, and i don't know because it had already occurred but i wondered if we remember what happened in our past and continue to give thanks if we would struggle spiritually. And so it made me think about the past. As I prepared for the message, you know, um, I thought about my past, how in the 80s, my parents came to America. I have three sisters, so four, with four little kids, all around uh, the, the ages of 10, coming to America. I wonder how my parents must have felt, not knowing a single word of English. I kid you not. Not even a thank you. They came to America because they were invited. My father was invited by his brother, and it took 10 years for a visa to come out. Literally, one day, we just got a notification in 85 from the immigration office. If you want to come to America, your visa has been passed, but you have about two months to pack up and go. So I was just six at that time, and we had to just literally pack up and go, or they said they will cancel our, our green card. So without even being ready, coming to America with four little girls, I wonder how my parents felt. Learning a language and culture for the first time. My, me, my sisters and I have never learned English or the alphabet. We had to learn a whole new culture, a whole new language. I don't even know how we did it. I thought about the past. Then getting married and having kids, and I have two boys, you guys know. One, they're both born earlier than 40 weeks. Babies are in their mommy's tummy for 40 weeks. Well, my, my two boys, one decided to come out at 36 weeks, and one came out at 29 weeks. One required surgery even before the age of five. One required to be in the neonative intensive, intensive unit for six weeks. Like, I had to leave the hospital after I gave birth by myself without a baby with just balloons and flowers, but no baby. Now, I wonder how we dealt with it. But looking at the past, I realized, wow, all those tears that I cried, all those prayers that I made, God, you didn't forget it. I I will make sure my kids remember that. I will make sure my kids remember how amazing you were and how you were with us every step of the way. And my parents remind us too, Till this day, you know, my sister is almost 50, my older sister is almost 50, but till this day, they remind us, oh, if we didn't go to church, my dad, if we didn't believe in God, you know, I don't know where we would be. And that is their way of helping us to remember that the last 35 years in America was all because of the grace of God. I wonder if the, the Israelites remember this, if they would have been enslaved. 
at this time, I just want you to take a, a piece of scratch paper or you can just think about it. Think about something in your past that you thought, oh, yeah, I, oh, my gosh, I totally forgot about that. But yes, God, you were there. I want you to take time to just bullet it or write it or draw it or, or talk about it with your parents or your brothers if you guys are worshiping together and talk. Remember that time? Or remember that time? Da, 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 and, oh, I thought I was going to die, but God was there. Or remember the time, mom and dad, things didn't look good, but God was there. What, what are some of those instances? I want you to take a couple of seconds to, th to, to think about it. I'm sure your thoughts are just rolling right now because you're thinking, oh my gosh, yes. I moved to a whole new place and I didn't know what to do, but God was there. Now think about your present. We have never, none of us, besides AIDS that was deemed pandemic, but it didn't hit us as this COVID-19 virus. We're living in a world that is going through a pandemic where we are not able to come to church freely. About three weeks ago, our church opened up our Korean worship, and we were able to come to uh, worship. But we were not able to praise, even with the mask on. It was hot. We had to keep our mask on to, to have safety. We had to get our temperature checks. You will, too. So when you come to church, we will have one entrance, one exit. We'll take your temperature. We'll take your information down just for safety and contact tracing if necessary. But you know what? That was fine. But when I entered into church and there was praise, I could not praise freely. A and tears just rolled down my eyes. And I thought, wow, all those times that we were able to praise and worship so freely. And who knew a tiny, tiny microscopic virus would hit us and we would not be, not even come to church freely. Not to have fellowship and break bread. I can't just call uh, a group of you guys and say, okay, come to church. We're just going to have ice cream. Or a pizza party, or let's go get a boba drink, you know. We have to just be safe. We have to wait. This is the kind of present that we're living in. But in it, there's traces of God's hand. Would you agree? During this last eight months when school looked different, our families started to change. We no longer could meet our loved ones. Things change. But I'm sure when we think and remember back, so many things to be thankful for. During this pandemic now, what are, what are some of the things that you're thankful for? On that little scratch paper or kind of as your thoughts are kind of rolling, think about one thing that you were thankful for or you are thankful for right now. Being thankful requires thinking. Being thankful requires us to remember of all the great things God has done for us. Last, up, last but not least, now let's think about the future, right? Not knowing what tomorrow brings because nothing is in our control. We can't really thank him, but we continue to walk our path and press onward because why? Because the victory has been won. And it is this faith and obedience that Moses really wanted to remind the Israelites. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but what we know is that God is holding it. We don't know what I will become tomorrow, but God does. And just that fact alone, today I can thank him. Amen? When we give thanks, we need to think and remember the past. What else? What else do we have to think about when we give thanks? We have to think about who to give thanks. The generic textbook answer is, yeah, who do we need to thank? Oh, we need to thank, we need to thank our Lord, right? So every time we pray, the first thing we say is, thank you, God, thank you for this day, thank you for... But are you really, really thankful? And besides that, you know, it seems like a simple answer, but you know what? We need to look around and really think, who do we need to thank? Not just your friends, not just your family, but diving deeper. Would you really sincerely thank someone that you just met at the market? 
a couple of weeks ago, I went through drive through because, you know, we can't eat, you know, in the, um, the restaurants. I mean, now we can, very limited. So we go to drive through a lot, you know, just for like an ice cream or a milkshake or whatever as a treat, right? Because, you know, you guys are home all day. My boys are home all day. So we're like, okay, let's just get to drive through I went to a drive through for one of this uh, fast food restaurants and um, I got a drink, but the Coke was all like, like leaky and i was like oh god i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to put that in my soda holder and i was like I'm, I'm gonna ask for a napkin and i was just about to reach and she said oh yeah, yeah, wait wait can i wipe that for you i don't want to get your car dirty so i literally looked at her if i could take off my mask i would have because i had the biggest smile and i said you know what thank you so much you just made my day you took that e extra effort i know there's car but thank you so much for taking the time to wipe down my coat and then she had the biggest smile. I mean, she had a mask, but I could tell you, you know, you could tell people smiling through their eyes. Um, she had the biggest smile. She said, oh, no problem. You have a great day. She brightened my day. I brightened her day because we stopped and we really thanked each other with sincere heart. Did you thank your mom for whatever you ate today or yesterday? Did you thank your dad for whatever he did to help you or to go out and work, your mom for working? Or did you thank your siblings that you normally ignore or try to stay away from? Did you just thank them for being them or thank them for getting that little, you know, cup of water or whatever? I think sometimes we take our family for granted. Um, I know I do a lot of times, and I don't say thank you enough. And I think it was just, you know, um, my upbringing, like we're always thankful, but we don't say, oh, thank you, or I love you. I don't know about your house, but when I was growing up, even if we were all girls, we never said, oh, 사랑해. Or we never, like, hugged my father and my mom and go, oh, my 사랑해, you know? Um, so I'm always thankful, but I don't think I express it enough. But now that I'm married and have kids, I try to practice a lot. So please, practice. If, if your parents, like, collapse because you said thank you, that's okay. Keep saying it because they won't collapse after the hundredth time. But showing your gratitude, just really thanking them, really brings out the Jesus in you because you do have that spirit in your heart. And don't ever forget it. Um, when we give thanks, Moses tells the people to remember the past and the current so that you would not lose your future. And it's, it's very important to think and remember it's important to thank the people around you. But I want us to dive a little deeper and think, how can we give thanks? So when we give thanks to God, it's not just sitting there and saying, oh, God, you know, thank you for this day. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. The way we give our thanks really is walking with him every day, abiding in his words every moment, worship and praising the Lord no matter what situation we're in, no matter what we are feeling, it's not about emotions, it's not about our intellect, it's about our heart that Jesus has. The minute we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we continue to walk with him and talk with him and, and ask. So it is through prayer, the meditation of the word, praise and worship, it is through obedience, it is through our life. So if you think about all those words that I said, it's not abstract. It's very concrete. That means you can see me giving thanks. You can hear me giving thanks. You can watch me giving thanks. So for those people that you thought, if that drive through lady wiped my coke and inside I was super thankful and I just drove off and I'm driving off inside my heart like, oh my God, I was so thankful. I wish I could meet her again. And I go home and I enjoy my coke and, and, and never did anything. Would she ever know? No. So Moses tells the Israelites, remember to think and remember the past and pass it down from generation to generation. So we know that giving thanks requires action. It's not just something that we say. So when you think about those people, it, it could start from your family. I would challenge you this week. Think about how you can thank your family. It can be a letter, right? It could be a text, 
um, I think since we got text messaging, I think I've become a lot more, you know, I don't know if you know, but I'm not like super warm fuzzy. And even to, you know, to my boys, I am like kids. I love kids. I love kids from any age, but you know, like adults and including my husband, I don't say like, Oh, I love you. I mean, I just feel like, ah, just, just, ah, right. Uh, but it's through text messages, you know, I send nice messages, right? I send bitmojis and emoticons and lots of hearts, right? So that's something that you can do if you feel embarrassed to say, oh, mom, I love you, right? Send her a text. Oh, ma, you know, I love you, right? Um, it can be through hugs. Just go and just give your mom a hug. Or for all you gentlemen out there, you feel awkward, you know, just give your mom a pat and say, oh, ma, oh, lunch was so good. It's like the best tteokbokki ever or best ramen ever or best curry ever i don't know my boys are still young so when they say mommy your food is the best in the world i'm so embarrassed because i'm like oh oh so sad you never ate delicious food but they love my food and i'm thankful because they express it every time so would you could you take this week to remember the past and come before god and say god you know what i forgot about that time but now thinking back i'm just filled with so much love and i'm just filled with so much thanksgiving god could you would you give me wisdom to remember it and never forget it and think about all those people that you're thankful for and you know what do something about it don't just sit down and think but send them a text like i said write them a card you know, take Take some groceries off your mom's hands when she comes. It's the little things that makes a world of a difference. And so in this month, as we uh, continue to talk about giving thanks, today we covered the letter T in thanks, and it's to think. This week, every time you say thank you, I want you to really, really think about it and really, really mean it. And in the next four weeks, um, some weeks I'll actually get to see you in person. Yay! Um, I would love to spend some time to chat with you as we worship and praise God and talk about all the great things God has done in our lives. And although Thanksgiving, uh, this whole 2020 will look different, the one thing that never changes is our Lord who loves us so much. And in it, I hope you can find his grace. I hope you can find lots and lots of things to be thankful for. To him, to the people around you, to the situation, because everything that we have, everyone that we have in contact with, all belongs in the hands of the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much. Really, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning and breathe thank you for allowing us to open our eyes and see the world thank you for allowing us to have ears and mouths to hear and talk and to praise and worship you father help us to never forget all the great things that you have done in our lives all those times that we thought we were alone and sometimes to be honest we thought you weren't there but you know what now thinking back you were there even before we were Help us to never forget who you are. And Father, help us to look around who we can thank. And not just in our minds, but take action and show them how thankful we are. Father, you are good, God. Give us wisdom. Father, give us the heart to want to obey you. And the love to please you and to just share your love with the people around us. Thank you for today. Father, we look forward to seeing the high schoolers next week. Help us to stay safe and be healthy um, until we can meet again. We love you. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship God as we collect the offering and our tithes. you weren't by
Father, thank you so much for this wonderful Sunday that we can get together just to learn and hear more about you, Lord. I pray that whatever we have taken from Miss Day's sermon, that we'll be able to implement it into our lives so that we can use it to um, draw closer to you than ever before and just learn more about you, God. I ask that you bless the offering in the hands that have given and I pray that this offering money will be used to further your kingdom and to further your glory, Lord God. Um, I ask that you bless everyone um, that has attended today's service and as well as those who haven't. And I thank you for everything you have done. And in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Good morning, everyone. We welcome you here to our worship. We want to invite all of you to our weekly Bible studies. If you have not joined us, please let us know and we can get you plugged in so you can have fellowship, game, and just diving deeper into God's Word. One great news I have to share this morning is that all youths in high school will be coming to church next week, Sunday. Um, we're going to have in-person worship in different um, grade levels. So next week will be high school. And so you will enter through the entrance of the fellowship hall and you will exit by the back parking lot. So if you can just adhere to some of the uh, not rules, but some of the regulations that we just want to keep for safety, that would be great. So all high schoolers will be looking forward to seeing you next week. Those of you who are at home, don't worry, our online worship will continue. So next week, Daniel will be praying for us, Kayla will be reading the scriptures, and Rachel Jen will be doing our offering prayers. So for those of you who are at home, you just join online worship as you normally do until it's your grade level to come to church uh, in person. We're super excited to see you. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.